I've been wanting to do a video on this boat and um, this is a 2019 Express HD 16 VJ and I bought this boat back in April and I was basically between purchasing this boat or a Tracker Grizzly uh, 1648 I think they call it a utility boat so these are both bare bones boats and I want to show you some of the things that we've done to the boats or to this boat and then give some comparison as to why I purchased this boat boat versus a Grizzly so this boat is a 2019 and I will tell you that I, I purchased this boat uh, from a local dealer for this is a 2019 so it was a 2019 carryover and I purchased it for $6,100 before taxes um, I'll tell you that the tracker the retail price on the tracker is $39.95 for their current year model and if you buy a trailer it's $1,295 of course some or all of that is subject to tax. What I don't like, one of the things I don't like about the Express is they don't give any kind of nationwide pricing. But what I've been able to find online is that, you know, NADA says that this boat and trailer list for eighty one thirty five. So, you know, you're looking at roughly what sixteen, sixteen to seventeen hundred dollars more for this boat versus the Tracker. Um, now. I guess it's up to you to determine whether or not it's worth that. But I bought this. One of the main reasons I bought this boat is because it's manufactured, you know, pretty close to where I live. So if there's, you know, if there's ever a warranty issue or you know, if you have a well pop or something like that and there's a warranty issue, the, uh, you know, the factory, the manufacturing plant is pretty close to where I live. So I would think my downtime for any kind of warranty work would be, you know, sort of minimal. Uh the trackers, I believe that their their bass boats are manufactured in Missouri. So if I had a warranty issue and it had to go back to the factory, there would be, I mean, weeks or months even of downtime on on the boat, you know, to send it up to have the warranty work done and get it back. Um, both both of those boats, the sixteen forty eight. Eight Grizzly and the HD 16 VJ um, Express boat. They're both 16 foot boats. The hull width from here to there on this boat is 51 inches. On the tracker, it's 48 inches. So I would imagine this boat's going to be a little more stable on the water because of that extra beam width, you know, that extra, not beam, but, you know, hull width. Um, the beam on this boat from there to there is 78 inches. So that's roughly six and a half feet. On the tracker, it's, 70, it's six feet, it's 72 inches. The maximum weight for, the, for this boat is 1,065 pounds, and for the Grizzly, it's 1,055 pounds. So it's only 10, 10 pounds less for the grizzly than what it is for this boat the maximum horsepower for this boat is 50 horsepower and for the 1648 grizzly is 40 horsepower they're both made from 0.10 5052 marine aluminum both of them are the draw weight of this boat is advertised at 600 pounds and for the grizzly is 638 pounds um so let me sh let me show you a couple of things. I'll, I'll put a picture up in this um, in this video that you'll see that this the rigging for this boat is something that you know we've done here. Me and my son-in-law, we fully rigged this boat. I had a 1988 Grumman. I think it was a 1548, and that boat was just it was spent. I mean, it was just done. And I bought that boat a couple of years ago, really because of the motor. The motor ran good and strong, made good compression. Haven't really had, except for tilt and trim, this old style tilt and trim. I haven't had any problems out of this motor at all. So I bought that boat for twelve hundred bucks. 
really for this motor, you know, really for the motor. Um, the, um, so everything that I could pull off that Grumman to put on this boat, I did. Um, this boat didn't come with like, in, like it came with nothing at all. The only thing this boat came with was, were these tie down straps for the trailer. That was it. Um, this is a fully aluminum trailer, which the Grizzly, if you purchase the trailer separately, it's going to be an all steel welded trailer. Um, I don't know that that trailer would necessarily weigh less than this trailer. Um, one of the things I noticed about the Grizzly trailer was that the wishbone stopped like right in this area here. And then you had a long tongue on that trailer, a long steel tongue on that trailer. So it was, you know, it wasn't as substantial as this. You'll notice this wishbone goes all the way nearly to the receiver. Um, so it's, you know, it's pretty stout. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's, it's, I think it's probably, if it's not lighter, it's no heavier than that smaller, you know, tracker, uh, whatever they call that tracker trailer or tracker trail or whatever. But this boat came with nothing. Um, and one of the things I'll tell you about the difference between the, these two boats is the tracker came with the cleats and it came with the uh, base plates for the pedestals in the front and the aft. And I had to add those. And so that's one thing I did like about the tracker. Um, but that's kind of a minimalist sort of thing. Uh, on the tracker boat in the rear, you see the casting deck. This casting, this is basically a full casting deck. With the tracker, it was, you only got a casting deck from here forward. And behind here, it was wide open. So in order to have a full casting deck, you'd have to deck that out yourself. I, I didn't really like that. Um, the tracker, one of the things I noticed in looking at the photos online was it had a lot of rivets in it. Um, the rear transom support was actually riveted in. This one's a, a double wall construction and it's fully welded. I like that better. The, um, there were, if you look online, you'll see a lot of black plugs on that tracker grizzly. And so I, I figured that those plugs were, uh, you know, to cover the holes where they had to fill, you know, those cavities for flotation. This doesn't have any of that. Um, the one thing that would concern me would be that those plugs are not UV treated and they're going to break down and they're going to deteriorate and let water come in. And so when that happens, that flotation is going to get waterlogged and it's going to add to the weight, you know, of the boat. And, um, and, and obviously that's going to affect some, you know, have some effect on performance. So one of uh, the other thing, another thing that I liked about the tracker was that it had these access plates. They're riveted to this, this front area off the casting deck, the front casting deck. And it, it would make, you know, wiring or adding accessories a lot easier. This boat didn't come with that. Um, I would think that, you know, Express is really a, I would think that they're a premium brand of, you know, aluminum boats and you do pay a premium price. And so that's one of the things that I felt like they kind of, you know, they fell short on. It's easy enough to drill through that aluminum, but I think they could have, uh, they could have done a better job there. Um, so we added the trolling motor, the base plates, those cleats, uh, again, you'll get those on the tracker. You'll get, you'll get cleats, but these cleats actually came off of the old Grumman. And the only thing I really didn't like is I had to drill some holes there to, you know, to bolt those things in. It's kind of the cost of doing business, I guess, but um, I'd rather not have done that. Uh, that console came out of the old Grumman. Uh, the only thing I really had to do there was to cut and bend the aluminum here to kind of match the angle of the gunnel so I could rivet that in. Uh, it's riveted in on the gunnel and the floor, so it's it's pretty sturdy. It's not going anywhere. I pulled this plate for the or box, I guess, for the controls out of the Grumman uh, and mounted it in um, in this boat. All the wiring harnesses, I pulled it out of the Grumman, and they're in this boat. Um, the seat base. So what we did was we took three quarter plywood. There's a piece of two by four in here to kind of bolt you know everything together uh and then we we coated that with um, fiberglass resin you know to give it some longevity and then put outdoor or marine grade carpet on it 
put the cup holders in and then inside here there's some tubs I bought those at Lowe's and actually I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not but I did drill some holes right there there's a hole drilled so that if any water gets in there it can drain out and it you know it stays pretty dry it doesn't stay 100% some water can get in there but not not just a whole lot of water can get in there uh, the seat base there talked about the casting deck on the rear we put in um, the bilge pump this is, is it ain't real pretty but it is functional so you can see there's it pukes out the water right there um, this this is a 1988 Johnson it's a VRO 40 but the VRO has been taken out and it's all pre-mixed but um, you know, I had a good motor and this motor runs really, really good and strong. And so there was really no need for me to, buy, you know, pay 12 or 15,000 bucks for a fully rigged bass boat with a new 40 horsepower motor on it when I had a good motor. Um, this, this motor had a 17 pitch prop, which really I needed to change it out. This boat just really struggled to get on plane with a 17 pitch prop. Um, when I had my son-in-law with me and we were fishing, he would have to go sit up on the casting deck to get some weight <clears throat> in the front of the boat to get this thing on plane. And, and that just, that just wasn't going to work. So we changed it to 15 pitch. The thing, you know, the boat actually planes pretty well now. Um, that old style tilt and trim, it's got the two rams on the outside. It, it, it doesn't work. It, the thing leaks down and finally I gave up on it and, I got a, um, a trim pin and, you know, it seems to be in a pretty good spot to get it on plane and to make the speed, you know, it needs to make. Um, there is a, obviously a trolling battery, a cranking battery and a six gallon fuel cell in there. One thing I plan to do is to take that six gallon fuel tank out and uh, Atwood and Scepter both make a 12 gallon fuel cell. So I'm going to probably buy that and get it, uh, get it mounted. Um, this is the other side and for this for the for the seat platform what we did was I told you how we constructed that we riveted aluminum angle to the gunnel and to the back along there and then we used the stainless steel self self tappers to mount that in place this thing is totally solid it is not going anywhere at all um, and you know with that um, fiberglass resin on the seat platform, I don't expect this thing to rot for years and years and years. So I don't really, you know, I'm pretty confident in that. The um, one, one of the complaints I have about the Express is that you'll see that tube there. And I had to mount that to run my electrical wiring. I think that, you know, for the premium price you're going to pay for an Express boat, you know, really they ought to weld in or fabricate in some sort of provision for wiring. I think most people are gonna, you know, even if even if you use this boat with a tiller, um, a tiller motor, and you know, there's going to be some necessity to have, you know, lights um, in the front of the boat, whether it's just nav lights or uh, lights on the casting deck. They, they really they should have put some provision for for electrical wiring, and they just didn't. I feel like they failed there. This this access door, I'm not a fan of this thing there you can see they've mounted the clip to the floor and this uh, this latch it just doesn't it just doesn't bite it and so there's no way really to latch that thing closed and keep it closed now i'll give them credit that that you do you do get the benefit of having the storage in in the under the entire you know front casting deck but but this lid surely they could have come up with something better than that that's just you know that to me that's a foul um the, uh, the tracker does have a lockable dry storage on the casting deck in the front, um, but the trade-off there is, is probably space. You're, you're, you're probably going to get maybe, you know, 20% the storage capacity of this entire area, and so you're, you're going to lose a lot of, of storage space. So that's, you know, that's something to consider if, if you're going to buy that boat. This trolling motor is a motor guide. Uh, it's a 55-pound trolling motor, and... I thought that it would be enough when I put it on there and most days it is, but if you get out, like I fish on Lake Washita some and that's a big lake. And if you get wind across there, this thing just, if it's a headwind, it just really struggles to, 
you know, to keep up. So, uh, you know, it's like land. They always tell you buy more than what you think you need. And I would say probably the same thing's true with a trolling motor. Uh, if you think you need a set a 55 pound, I'd probably buy a 70 pound. And, and, and I personally wish I had. So, um, but that's pretty much the boat. It's a, you know, the thing I'm, I'm really pleased with the way that it came out. Um, it does everything that we need to do. We can lake fish. We can run up some of the rivers and do some, you know, catfishing in the rivers. Uh, really pleased with, uh, the, the final product. And, um, uh, I don't, I don't know that there's much that I would do differently. Uh, I have thought about filling this area in a decked area. I see some of those guys that put John boats out, you know, and they do all of the, um, you know, all of the, they deck, they deck the whole thing out as far as decking and storage, but basically it's a, you know, it's a floating storage container and, and that's not really what I'm looking for. Um, there, some of the ideas they have is pretty are pretty clever and, and I would think you could incorporate those into something like this pretty easily and so and maybe I will do that but I, you know like I said so much of it's just like a it's just like a floating storage container so it's not something really I would um, for the most part do to this boat um, I'll talk about I made some note, notes here I talked about the price of the boats um, the biggest benefit to this boat, this particular boat, is it is all welded. Like I said, the the uh, tracker does have a lot of rivets in it, and I'm not really a fan of that. Uh, some of the pros for the tracker is that it does come with cleats and pedestal bases. Uh, it does have provisions for the front, um, you know, to add accessories on the front. Uh, the, other, the other benefit is, and maybe Express says this too, but I know the tracker comes in an SC model. You can buy the SC model with a 20 horsepower um, Mercury engine, four stroke, for 10,700 bucks. And that comes with a trolling motor with seats, console, and an aerated live well. So it comes with, you know, the electrical wiring and the switches that you'll need for that. I would say some of the cons on this boat would be no wiring provisions. Uh, the front compartment door is just a, you know, it's just a total failure. And then another thing that I, to me is a con is they don't have national, uh, national advertised pricing. And I think, you know, to me, if you're going to spend money on something like this, they ought to, you ought to be able to go to their website and see what the national advertised pricing is. Uh, the cons for the, the Grizzly to me would be, you know, it's an all steel trailer. Uh, the rivets, there's so many rivets on there. Those plugs for the, for the, um, to install the flotation the transom support i'm not a fan of that at all um and then that open rear decks you know construction i don't really i'm not really digging that i don't think you ought to spend that even four thousand dollars on a boat like that and then have to deck over the rear you know half of the casting deck just to make it functional um so that's the boat uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give it a like and a thumbs up and I appreciate it. You guys have a good day.